So welcome back or welcome to the second part of the after talk of Romeo and Juliet. Um, again, I am Yumi Mia, the artistic director of Once the Institute Players, and I am still hosting this event. Um, I suppose you have reached here by watching the part one or the main show, but if you haven't, please go check them out from the link below. Um, this session is joined by Yuki, who played the role of Lord Caplet. Lauren was playing the nurse, Risa, who played Tybalt and the video editing. Um, Malina appeared as Mercutio and also worked as the stage manager of this production. So um, similar to Christina, um, this production was your first appearance at WIP, Yuki although you've participated in the stage reading of Charles Dickens before, which I've directed. Um, I would like to ask your impression of working um, with the members at WIP. Okay, so it was kind of sad to begin this project with, you know, all online due to the current situation of COVID-19. But um, that was, I was very honored. I felt very honored to be part of this production. And even though it's online because um, each one of them have definitely have, have great English skills and I, I was very inspired too. And yeah, and I really loved their, you know, their love towards performing arts stuff. And I was very glad to, Make uh, one, make one, you know, make one play together. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, so you've you've mentioned about the online current situation, uh, but we've obviously started off by performing on stage. Um, but you also um, referred to the ability, um, English ability of the members, um, as well as their interest towards theatre. Um, Comparing to your past experience, was there any kind of difference between the group that you were in or you are currently in um, as opposed to WOP? Okay, so it is my, almost my first experience to join, you know, one kind of community, which where I have to use English all the time, basically all the time. And that was not much difficult I mean, less than difficult than I expected, less than I expected. So that was good for me. And about the theater, comparing my past experience and current experience, that was definitely more difficult to, you know, understand the, you know, connotation of the, not the connotation, I mean, the atmosphere of the play mm. through the online and also in English. And because I, I've done Shakespeare before, but that was definitely, that was, of course, in Japanese, and that was with my, you know, friends just uh, within the same age group. So yeah, that was totally different. But I think I had good time, and I had also had had some hard time to think about the play in English. Yeah. Yeah, good. Um, in, in part one, um, Andy actually told us that he had some kind of difficulty. Um, of building up the character before entering the role because he's in his daily space rather than going to the theater or going to the stage to perform mm -hmm. with someone who he hasn't spent so much time before. Um, so I would sympathize you for like doing this for the first time mm -hmm. alone. So I really hope that we have more opportunities in the future to maybe perform on stage and gather together in the rehearsal room and to build up the character that you want to build. So yeah, brilliant, thank you. Um, so let's move on to Lauren. Um, so previously, um, you played one of the heroines in Twelfth Night. Um, and for this occasion, you have shifted to a comical role. So what, what, was there anything you have applied um, intentionally to form a solid character? Because there's a huge difference between like, being like a prince, princess, and being a person who takes care of the princess. Yeah, there's actually a lot of things that I had to consider when acting as a nurse this time, because in the previous play in Twelfth Night, um, 
the princess, well, the character is a noble lady. So I had to like be careful more with the way I'm speaking, my intonation, like my body movements as well. Um, but since this time, it's more of a comedic and comic, comic relief character. Mm -hmm. um, the one important thing that I had to focus on is the pacing because like um, to deliver a smooth comedy like uh, the timing should be just right if I speak respond too slow or something that uh, the scene might turn out not as funny as expected so that's like one of the things that I had to pay attention and um, honestly uh, for me to build this comedic uh, kind of uh, character in my mind I had an inspiration from the past play as well in Twelfth Night. There's also the character Mariah, which is the young waiting gentlewoman for Olivia, for the princess. And yeah, I sort of um, set that character as one of my examples uh, to see, to think how the nurse should act, like how playful she should be. But also there's a difference since the nurse is, of course, older and not like Mariah, who is younger. Uh, I had to also incorporate this um, parental aspect of the nurse where she kind of sees Juliet as her own daughter. So, yeah, I tried to add those feelings as well. And also like her protective um, when she's like especially judging towards Romeo yeah there were some hard moments but after practicing several times and thanks to the direction from the directors as well like yeah I think I was able to perform it okay um brilliant um so you've mentioned about like the pace of delivery um yes. and I I would think it would be more difficult to do online because you can't mm -hmm. actually see the actor that you are playing with. So to be able to um, respond immediately um, to the saying of your partner um, might be extremely hard on this condition. Um, but do you think um, this, well, obviously this situation is still on, so we cannot use the theater to the full extent. Uh, but do you think the involvement of these new like online system might dominate the theater or do you think there is going to be another form of theater coming up soon? Mm, all right. Mm, I think I, I'm not sure about dominating, but um, I'm pretty sure that there'll be more um, theaters uh, that are held online like this. Mm -hmm. And because I still think that the experience in a physical theater is still different, obviously, it's still the atmosphere, the aura is just different than just watching online. So I think that would still be um, maybe the main kind of performance. But I think I do think there's going to be way more online theater in the future as well as people are getting more creative on like how using how to use this um, platforms like Zoom. And there's a lot of like uh, other creative things as well that we can do in online that we cannot do in real life. Like maybe for example, using, using like filters or backgrounds in Zoom mm -hmm. and yeah, many other things that, um, that there's still room for creativity in my opinion. <laughs> Yeah, I do really agree on your opinion because of this um, COVID situation, people went on like searching uh, for new technology and new ways of like um, approaching the theater itself. And um, I think in part one, Christina mentioned about um, the difficulty of creating the show online using these um, Zoom programs because there were a lot of things that she cannot think of. So there are a lot of possibilities um, at the same time. Um, and about 10 days ago, um, there was like a mixture of online live performance and VR system and avatar creating systems and motion sensors and everything. Um, so future theatre might change, but we wouldn't know how it can be used by us um, because the nature of our theatre company is not to use much money. 
Um, but if you want to use those high tech um, gadgets, um, and if that type of theater becomes the mainstream, um, what would happen to the students' theater companies that wouldn't use much money? So yeah, let's hope for the best. Um, I would really like to see um, those shows on, online as well as live. So yeah, I'm, I think we are in the middle of like change. So let's hope that we can still enjoy live shows as well as those high tech, uh, fancy um, entertainments. Good, thank you. Um, so moving on to Risa. Um, so you've also um, appeared in Twelfth Night and you were playing the role of Feste. And in the past Twelfth Night, Feste was portrayed in a different way. Um, he not only worked within the plot, but also observed the plot from outside. So I would say he had the quality of um, normal character as well as the um, marginal character. Um, but in Romeo and Juliet, you became a character um, which creates a reason for the catastrophe. And how do you feel about such change? Um, I think I naturally like humor in everyday life and in entertainment. So Feste was very, very natural for me, or it was at least very fun to perform. But I think a bad habit I have is um, I try to avoid conflict, which is not always a good thing. So I think this this time I was forced to explore that that confrontation and like clashing of people. Oh, and here is my cat <laughs> clashing the zoom, crashing the zoom. But um, yes, so. It was a challenge for me, but I think I finally got the hang of it when we recorded for real. Like we had a few rehearsals and to be honest, I it was hard for me to find the role. But I think once we had that pressure of we have to record this for the official recording, um, I was able to really bond with the other characters even through Zoom to record something. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm really glad to hear that you find like another character that you can perform. Um, because I, I think having a role that you feel comfortable with is always good. But if you can play another role, it would expand your possibility. And same thing can be applied to real life. Um, you can be always happy, but life would sometimes give you um, things that you cannot be happy with. Uh, but even so, um, it is very difficult to stay positive. Then you can maybe leave for a while and be negative for like five minutes and come back as a positive person. Um, so it's always good to explore a lot of different characters through theater. And that's one of the beauties of um, allowing students to perform different roles um, because it would also expand the um, like innate character in the actor themselves. So brilliant work um, for exploring your roles. And I have another question which is related to the technological side because you've um, organized the video editing uh, for the second time for this, for our production. Um, so after, maybe uh, my question is similar to the one that I've asked Laura, Laura, Lauren, but do you think the involvement of such technology would increase in the future? And do you think it's good or bad? Um, I think we're in a moment right now where we're forced to mm. think of new ways to bring theater, even if the cast is separate, separated or if the audience can't actually be there. But um, there's constantly new technology and um, like, I wish we had the power to chase it more, but it's, it's really great to be able to collaborate and help each other. Last time um, I was mostly did all of the editing, but this time the two directors edited each scene and then handed the footage to me. So I really only edited a little bit. It was the 
the directors who could like bring their vision to life. So that was nice to be able to collaborate on the editing. So I, I suppose it's becoming more and more like team efforts than someone specializing in one spot. Yeah, good. Yeah, um, so. yeah. thank you, thank you. Okay, so um, Malina, um, hi, thanks for waiting. <laughs> so um, more than you've acted within this show, you were working as the second executive director of this WIP group. And you have been managing the group by supporting the backstage. Um, you've been collecting schedules, you've been um, setting the rehearsals and you've been sending out emails. And obviously you've probably tried to um, see everything is going in the right direction. Sometimes consulting someone or giving advice. Um, so my question is rather distance from the role that you've played, but what kind of group do you want this WIP to become in the future? And with, with ha having your per personal experience, can, can you come up with um, some sort of quality um, that the next executive director should have? Yeah, so as you said, yeah, uh, I wish I said a little bit about this, but our groups, you know, started out where like, especially in Twelfth Night where people had had their own speciality. So Risa was like, you know, editing most of the things. And uh, I think Hannah, who was our director was really doing a lot, most the script itself. So, uh, and this time we were able to do more um, like group work in a way. So like people could take bits and bits and pieces of different workload. And I think I want it to be even more like that. So, you know, people can cooperate and uh, work on uh, a project. So that's what I hope like the future group will, you know, be like. Um, and the second question, um, so in the future, um, because our origin of this group, uh, WIP itself comes from stage performance, of course, because it is a drama club in a way. So, I really hope we can go back to stage at some point, but because of the situation, it is unfortunately gonna be probably really hard to have also audiences and everyone in a small room. So next time, if it's possible, I'd love to have a collaboration more with um, li so live stage and also like uh, online, like for example, like a live stream maybe from like a outside stage, you know, so we don't have the have to be inside a room or only with actors, you know, but not, no uh, view, no audience there. So, you know, that's, I really want us to go back to stage because it was, it was a nice experience to do everything online as well, but going back to, you know, our origin is also very nice. Yeah, um, I, I, I do obviously um, love the live stage. So yeah, um, as you've mentioned, the origin of our group, it is extremely exciting if we have the chance to go back to the um, Tsubuchi stage in the university um, where we cannot use the technology at all. <laughs> um, but yes, let's hope for the best. Um, I don't think we can use the stage for the next production. Uh, maybe we can use the classroom, but I don't know. Um, maybe next year, around the spring, um, it is possible that those restrictions would be um, cleared out. Um, but for the future production, um, do, do you have anything that you might feel interested in seeing us create? Well, um, because this time we did a pretty, you know, tragic, pretty gloomy in a way kind of um, um, play. So I would like us to go back to maybe a lighter, you know, um, theater play, which is probably comedy or something like that. Um, 
I don't know. There's, I mean, you know, if when I think of Shakespeare and comedy, like the first thing that comes up to my mind is Midsummer Night's Dream. But mm. I know that that's very, you know, pretty confusing to put it into like a really, <laughs> maybe yeah. like a short, yeah. <laughs> you know, time. So, yeah, we'll yeah, see it, how. It is, it is indeed pretty complicated. But um, one thing that came instantly in my mind is that the, um Theseus and um other characters outside of the wood um can appear without having the mask and fairies um in the forest can wear a proper mask to indicate that they are having a pandemic inside the wood <laughs> and so oh. yes there, there is a possibility we can apply many ways of interpretations and representations to maybe relate to our daily lives and that cannot be created in other ear. So yes, it, 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 it can be done. Um, it's always yeah. depending on how the director would place that idea into action. So let's hope mm -hmm. we would have a good um, comedy for our next production. Yeah. Okay, um, so is there anything you might want to add or ask to each other or to me? I'm very excited to know who the next executive will be. <laughs> well, yes, that's something we, we, you and me, um, have to talk about. And yes. Um, yes, the probably the audience of this Afterthought might find out later. And um, mm. yeah, we, 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 we should be um, proud of ourselves for creating and reaching this point of finalizing our latest production. And I really hope that we can do more exciting things in the future um, with, with this group and maybe um, increasing members and also, if possible, collaborating with other universities. We don't know. Uh, maybe it can be a collaboration with other universities in Japan, maybe in other universities abroad, maybe a professional theater. We don't know. So let's hope someone would approach us after seeing this after talk and we'll go from there. So um, for today, thank you very much for your all coming and I'll see you all very soon, hopefully at a pub drinking properly. And uh, for the audiences, thank you so much for coming to this after talk. Please do have a look at part one. And if you haven't, I don't think so, but if you haven't, please enjoy the main show. And obviously there are um, some archives related to the previous show, Twelfth Night, and we are working really hard um, in pursuit of um, Shakespeare's sonnet marathon. So please enjoy our content and hopefully see you soon um, by the stage. Thank you. Thank you.